Take 5,000. <laughs> Welcome to Into the Future, a kid's guide to the process of scenario yeah. writing, written by Kathy Frazier and Elaine Reynolds. So fasten your seatbelts and hang on tight. We're about to enter the scenario writing zone. Out of the vortex of FPS scenario writer questions and imaginings, two mysterious guides arise to navigate writers through the mystical steps of the scenario writing process. Their names are Tracker and GPS. Here are some of the questions they asked. What is a scenario? Where do I start? What are the topics? How do I create a future world? How do I show the passage of time? How do I add a personal touch? What is the best writing process? How do I bring my character to life? How do I choose my title? Well, when we did our live broadcast, we took Oh, when you're writing your scenario, which question is the most important to you? Think for a minute and see if you can answer that. The amazing thing is, we are going to touch upon all these questions in our presentation. So, oh, it looks like Elaine has something from Tracker. Let's check it out. Oh yes, this is GP and tracker, GPS and Tracker. Welcome them and they've sent us a flashgram message. Let's see, what does it say? It says, oh, you're invited. Please join us on our maiden voyage through the vortexes of the scenario writing process. Pack your backpacks. You're gonna need research, imagination, vision, determination, futuristics, logic, writing skills, commitment, and creativity. Oh my goodness, that's a lot of things to pack. This must be going to be some trip. Oh, I, I forgot the PS. It says, remember to open the attached navigation guide. There it is. Let's see. We're going to be going to a lot of places. This is going to be so exciting. Where do you think we're going to go first, Kathy? Well, our first stop is the vortex of topic. And every time we go to a vortex, Tracker is going to have a special message or words of advice for us. Here's the first one. If you want to avoid tears and frustration, select a topic that captures your imagination. Now, in this vortex, we're going to meet some strange characters who will guide us in topic selection. But wait a minute. What are next year's topics? Elaine's going to take us on to meet those strange characters we were talking about. Yes. Meet the three Stygian witches. You might recognize them from Shakespeare's Macbeth or from the Clash of the Titans. The main characters, Perseus and Macbeth, consulted with these witches because they had the power of the all-seeing eye and could share knowledge and wisdom about the future. 
But since we cannot visit the Stygian witches and gain the power of their all-seeing eye, I guess we're going to have to move on, Kathy. Never fear. The scenario writing witches are here. They recommend to begin by reading the overview, overview for every topic to get a basic idea of the possibilities and then use the four eyes to decide. You can view the overviews for each of the topics at the FPS scenario at the FPS website. So read all of those first and then consider the four eyes. The first one is interest. Which topic most fascinates you and incites your enthusiasm to start to write? The second eye is impact. Which topic will allow you to send the strongest message about the future? Imagination. Which topic sparks the most creative ideas for your plot and conflict? And the fourth eye stands for influence. Which topic do you best understand? So you can write from a stance of knowledge and wisdom. And when you weigh the answers to these, caref these questions carefully, you will see which topic is the best for you. And then you're going to feel like a firework. that celebration the vortex of research this is a step that a lot of scenario writers want to, want to skip they want to go straight to writing their scenario but here are some really special words of advice from tracker researching your topic before you start to write will help your creative ideas take flight now, GPS wants to get into this a little bit, too, and he has some words of advice. He says that when you start your research, you should look for trends. What is a trend? A trend is a hot topic in the news, a big event, or a decision that our leaders have made that will have an impact on the future. Some examples of trends right now in the environment might be global warming, climate change, um, pollution in the ocean, and in technology, perhaps artificial intelligence or total immersion. My student Jasmine was researching gamification this year, and she came across a trend where the military were using pilots and video games together to learn how to control drones during wartime. And she came out seventh in the international competition. Her story, Insurgent Eliminated, can be, writ can be read in the publication this year. So as you do your research, keep track of those creative ideas that you come upon in your research. Write them down. You never know, they might inspire they might um, spark your imagination or inspire a plot. Lane's about to take us to my favorite vortex now, the future. Oh boy, we're now entering the vortex of futures. Tracker's message here, leave the world of today far behind and develop a futurist's frame of mind. And if we move to the next slide, we can see um, the category list. The World Future Society believes that time, the time where the decisions and trends of today will have the most impact is the long range future. And they define that as 20 to 50 years in, from today. If we look at the FPS categories list, we can see all of the topics where changes occur. 
So since the scenario must be set 20 to 50 years in the future, let's explore what can happen in that time span with a gentleman known as Rip Van Winkle who fell asleep for 20 years. The scene begins just as Rip is falling asleep. Let's watch. He or anyone else had ever had. He slept all night and all the next day and each day after. Week followed week. Leaves fell from the trees and the season changed. Snow blanketed him. He slept on and on. Great events passed him by. The pages of history turning slowly began a new chapter without Rip Van Winkle. Then one morning he woke. Now that you have an idea of all the changes that could happen in, over a 20 year period, I want you to relax and get into a comfortable position. Breathe in and out slowly and evenly. evenly. As the music plays, think about the FPS categories and all the changes that might occur in the next 20 years of your lifetime. Now close your eyes. You are about to have a Rip Van Winkle experience. Try to remember all that you see. Five, four, three, two, one. Cue music. <laughs> to do now is to just think about the ideas that you came up with for the future. I don't know about you, but I was thinking about avoiding traffic jams on the way to school and maybe have a flying car. I was also thinking maybe I don't want to do dishes anymore. So I'm thinking I want a robot that will do my dishes or a smart house that will just take over and cook everything for me. That sounds like a great idea to me. I think so too, Kathy. And I was thinking that, you know, during this quarantine that we're under right now, I'm missing my friends. And so maybe we can, they could come up with a system for social relationships or communications where it would be a hologram of the person that you would be talking to. So it, would feel like you're, you have them right there with you in the room. That's a great idea. And maybe that would go along with education so we wouldn't have to stop school and we could still be there without making any changes. Yeah, that sounds great. <laughs> wouldn't it be nice in the environment if there was a substitute for plastic bags since plastic bags are polluting our ocean? And I would love to have some kind of defense and safety mechanism that would keep us away from wars. I don't know if that could happen in the next 20 years, but I sure wish it could. 
all nations getting along together. Well, let's move on to the vortex of exemplars. And Tracker says, reading a scenario winner is the key to unlock what an outstanding scenario should be. In our book, we have three examples of international scenario first place winners and one in each division. So there's also an analysis page that will help you go through as you read them and pick out what are the important components of the scenario. Here's Tracker. He's getting to re ready to read and analyze the scenario. And to his left, you see the important components. How creative is your story? Have your readers entered into a future world? Are your ideas clearly developed? Does your own style and voice show through? Does the reader connect with your main character and maybe empathize? How are your spelling and your grammar in your story? And then look at the last one, topic-related research. And this is where all the vocabulary and trends might enter into your story. Now, they say that creativity is the highest level of thinking. Elaine, are you ready for the vortex of creation? I sure am. Let's move on. We've traveled a long way to get to this point. We are now entering the vortex of creation. Tracker's message to us here is it's time to get started and you will find it's best to begin with the end in mind. But we really can't begin with the end in mind. Um, before we do that, we have to ha have some things to consider and some decisions to make. So moving along, Kathy. Okay, the first thing we need to look at is um, which formatting style should you use? Um, it could be a narrative, a dialogue, a diary, journal, even a letter. The choice is up to you. Next, you can, must consider the all-important message. This might be the most important um, decision you have to make because this message should be powerful and leave the reader thinking about the consequences of the actions that we are or are not taking today. And then what is the best point of view for your story? The first person or the I person is speaking or the third person, which would be the he, she, or it from that perspective. So what type of, what type of characters will most deeply experience the impact of the decisions and trends of today that you choose to take into the future? Whether you use an animate or an inanimate character, it should be placed directly into the conflict so readers can clearly see and feel the impact on your character's life. You know, after all this decision making, oh, oh and then we're going to move on to the second considerations, and, and that's your story has to have a beginning and middle and end to be complete. Um, and the, the purpose of the beginning is is to capture the reader's attention, to introduce the main character, and place the reader into the future world. Many writers have a hard time getting started, but don't let that blank page get you down. Just start writing. Many times the beginning paragraph comes out later on in the writing process once the state strain of the blank page is gone. Now the middle, this is where the action is. Here the main character is embroiled in the conflict and you show the impact of the trends and decisions that you've selected and we're making today. Your work in the middle is to paint a clear picture of what the future might hold and how it feels, what it feels like for your character. And then in the end, you must resolve the conflict and drive your message home. It is good to think about what is possible or preferable so that your scenario is real and believable. Give the reader something to think about. Sharing your passion to realize or avoid the future world you've envisioned will allow your, messenger, your message to come through loud and clear. You know, after all this decision-making, it can make you feel a little bit stormy inside. So 
like maybe a thunderstorm is coming. See all those clouds? So let's create one. Okay, you might have done this in your classrooms, but the first thing we do is bring on the wind by gently blowing air through your teeth like this. Now snap your fingers and finger slowly and the rain will begin to fall. Now blow a little harder and you'll start to hear the rain and clap your hands together in a regular pattern to make the wind strong and the rain fall harder. Now blink your eyes and stomp your feet to represent thunder and lightning. Oh my goodness, you hear that rain? <laughs> Kathy had to put up an umbrella. Now the storm is beginning to weaken. Stop the thunder and lightning. Tap your fingers slowly to breathe a little lighter. Until the storm passes. Just find a rainbow. Just carefully, before you begin to write, nothing but blue skies will come your way. Sing a song. Nothing but bluebirds all day long. I never saw the sun shining so bright. I never saw things going so right. I notice in the days hurrying by when you're in love, my how they fly. All of them gone, nothing but blue sky from now on. <laughs> wow. All this planning is through. We've made it through the storm. And what does Tracker have to say now, Elaine? He says, you're ready to start writing. Don't delay. Create your future in your own special way. And you might begin with a storyboard. Creating a storyboard before you actually start writing might help you to create and organize your ideas into a logical sequence. Now we're showing you two types of storyboards. The first one is a brainstorming storyboard. And the brainstorming storyboard is where you can just get out all your ideas, maybe of different characters who will be in your story, um, conflicts that might arise, solutions, messages. You can get them all down and think about them for a while. With a plot storyboard, you might think of how each of your ideas will sequence along so that your storyboard is so that your story is logical. Up in the right hand corner, you see an example of a storyboard template. And you can see there's a space for you to draw a picture and a space for you to get down your written ideas. And in the bottom one, and this is a creative way to use the storyboard, you can use post-it notes. And that way you can get all your ideas down and remove the ones you don't want for a brainstorming storyboard, or you could sequence ideas and move them around. You know, you notice that in the um, post-it storyboard, you can see a character with a really sad face. And some of the pictures that you draw might help you think about your creative writing, how to show and not tell. For example, if you had a boy who was cold, you might say, Patrick, instead of saying Patrick was cold, you might say that Patrick was freezing, his teeth shuddered and rattled as his temperature fell. Creating a storyboard is like making a movie run. You're thinking about what will happen, how people will act, and maybe what does the setting look like? And then it will also help you decide on your genre. Adventure, suspense, 
humor or drama. And here's Tracker again. He wants to remind you that when you're, when you're go for the exemplary, look for the, look at the rubric and what the evaluators were, would be looking at and see if your story meets the criteria. And now you're about to enter the vortex of editing and revision. <clears throat> Sometimes when you reach this vortex, you'll feel like you're falling into a black hole. You worked hard to complete your story, and now you're going to be asked to pick it apart. Unbelievable. Tracker says, spend quality time in this vortex and you'll see your scenario will become the best it can be. So how do we go about doing the editing? Um, if you look at the next slide, you'll see that we, we recommend target practice and we recommend at least three or four um, visits to the target practice range. Um, in the first one, uh, the first session, you might want to determine if the story is whole and coherent. Check to see if everything that you wrote is logical, essential, and helps to move the story forward. Then after rewriting, you move on to a second round of editing and revision. And in this session, you might check each individual paragraph and section to make sure they're clear and unified and have good transitions throughout. Then after making these revisions, rewriting, you return to round three. Um, in this round, you could target the entire scenario by reading it through sentence by sentence and checking grammar, spelling, punctuation, verb tenses. It's really, really hard to edit your own work because somehow your brain shows you what you think should be there. And sometimes what you think is there is really not there. So in round four, um, you might want to go back and make a target board like the one you see here. And you would take a dart and throw it at the board and whichever circle it landed on, you might want to focus. So for example, it might land on logic or it might land on sentence structure or dialogue. And you can check to see that everything there is real and believable and keeps in focus with your characters. Now, if you look over here, we'd like you to try to avoid fatal errors um, that we've noticed in our years of working with kids. And these are fatal errors are within your scenario. If you change tenses from future to past to present, it can be confusing. Um, if you use over-dramatized or under-dramatized dialogue, it can make the story seem a little less real and believable. And if you use correct dialogue punctuation, then we get lost in the dialogue as we read and we don't know who's talking. So, you know, um, now is the time to pay, pay special attention to coaches' comments and constructive feedbacks. And you might even want to share it with family and friends and relatives so they could add their feedback. Kathy, you have a method of, of sharing that I thought was really good. Could you share it with us? Sure. One thing that you might do is use Google Docs. And in a Google Docs system, whoever is helping you to edit your scenario or revise your scenario can write words of advice or concern on the side so that you can go back and read them and consider their comments and maybe make changes in your scenario. And, and the, above all, the thing that you want to remember and the last thing as you're editing and revising is that the purpose of that is to refine the details, to clarify your message, to develop your characters. And oh, <laughs> speaking of characters, let's move on and talk about these guys we see on the screen now, Kathy. Yeah, during our years of coaching, we've met a lot of personalities that we editing and revising. And we thought it would be really fun to ask our artists to turn these into cartoon characters. So as we tell you about each one of them, uh, think of which one you might most be like. The first one is Patty Perfectionist. Now, if you're like Patty, 
nothing meets your high standards of writing. So you continually keep thinking there's a better way and you never make any progress. Paul Perales says, um, just discards all of his ideas. He makes no progress either. Then there's long-winded Lucy. I've met a lot of long-winded Lucy's because scenario writers love to write and sticking to a 1500 word limit is really hard. But if you start out your scenario draft with 5,000 words, you and your coach are in for a scenario writing nightmare. And last you'll meet eloquent Earl. Earl thinks that long words and illogical metaphors make his scenario better and will impress the evaluators. <laughs> the trouble is all those words and metaphors only make sense to him. If you look at the second row, you'll come across Bob, bullheaded Bobby. And if you're like him, you think that you're an exceptional writer. And your teachers think you're an exceptional writer too, but you don't feel that editing is any advice is needed because you got it covered. Um, as a matter of fact, if someone tries to give you some advice, it really makes you mad and you refuse to edit and revise it in any way. But in doing so, you lose an opportunity to improve the quality of your work. If you play the role of a helpless Hannah, you lack confidence or maybe you've done inadequate research. You whimper and cry instead of buckling down and thinking for yourself. This is very frustrating for your coaches and everyone else who believes in you and wants, doesn't want to do your work for you. Um, good enough Gary's don't like making revisions. So if you're like him, you procrastinate and do as little editing and revising as possible, just enough to get by. And then if you're an autonomous Annie, you actively seek relevant advice when editing and rewriting because you understand that this process brings out the brings out your voice and more brings out your voice more clearly and makes your scenario the best it can be. You are a coach's dream. <laughs> on that note, now that we've met all these characters, Kathy, let's move on and take another poll, which we did in the in the live broadcast. And we asked the question, which one are you? You know, in our live broadcast, the one that came out the highest was Patty the Perfectionist. And that was kind of surprising for us, but then we got to thinking, if you're here at scenario, uh, international scenario writing, that's probably how you got here. <laughs> I think Patty Perfectionist covers some of the other ones too. Like I think you're uh, right. and Lucy and um, Paul Paralysis. I think they have a little bit of Patty Perfectionist in them too. Sometimes during, during the time you're writing, you could play the role of any of these personalities. You don't have to be limited to just one. And so if you're watching this, maybe share with each other, which one are you? Share with your coach. <laughs> They probably already know. <laughs> so here we are. We've reached the vortex of celebration. And Tracker says, you're awesome, first rate. And now it's time to celebrate. And so <laughs> that was fun. And let's not forget, after you've celebrated, you need to submit your scenario. And so you want to pay special attention to your affiliate director's requirements for submission so that your scenario is right in there in the competition. So here we are now. 
we hope that our presentation has expanded your mind. And in the words of Randy Bomer, you are now empowered with the tools to project your voice into the world. You have spoken out for positive change and you have reached the pinnacle of scenario writing success. Now, we want to play just a short passage from a band called Five for Fighting. And as you think about writing your scenario for next year, remember their words. And the world do you want? Starts now. So, we're not doing this live, but if you did have questions about uh, scenario writing, our book, Into the Future, A Kid's Guide to the Scenario Writing Process, will, I believe, answer all of those questions. What do you think, Elaine? Oh, I'm hoping so. <laughs> we put a lot of time and effort over the years working with our students um, in the scenario writing process and we love it and hope that this book will bring all those years of experience so it would be like we were teaching you as our students. And this can be purchased starting in July in the FPS Smart if you go onto their website. So we hope you enjoyed our presentation. And we look forward to reading a lot of awesome scenarios in next year's competition. Yes. Thank you for sharing with us. <laughs>